Welcome to the Primitive LifeWays channel. In this video, we'll demonstrate intermediate flint napping techniques by reproducing and replicating prehistoric southwestern style projectile points. I know, that's a mouthful. We'll take a look at some original examples and then get into the video's demonstration. So stick with me, we've got a great show coming up. Hey everyone, before we jump into this video, I wanted to invite you over to my completely new and redesigned website that's primitivelifeways.com. I really think you folks will enjoy it. We redesigned every single page, all of the content there. The blog posts are 100% free, educational material, and very interactive with you folks, my audience. Once more, that's primitivelifeways.com. Check it out and let me know what you think. Now before I start working stone, I want to show you a few original prehistoric examples. These were recovered in the archaeological record and once again donated to me by our local museum for this video's purposes and demonstration. So much thanks and gratitude for them. Uh, these two off to my left are smaller projectile points as you can see. These are not much longer, so it is about one 0.4 centimeters this one a little less length so just over a centimeter long very small points quite narrow as well these come from the prehistoric salado the one to my right the final projectile point is made of obsidian you can see its irregularities this comes from the prescott culture prehistoric prescott culture in central arizona it has humps and bumps the centering isn't exactly straight. It has a concave bottom. It's very sharp and serrated. Nonetheless, it will kill. The point in the center, you can see its irregularities. The cortex ex is exhibited on both sides. The notching is quite shallow as well. This tip is knocked off. I expect it was fired at one time or stepped on. In its original condition, it would likely kill. And finally, the projectile point off to my left, you can see it once again has irregularities. It has a swell on the top. It's somewhat concaved on the bottom and shallow. The tip was knocked off, likely fired or once again stepped on. Nonetheless, once again, I expect in its original condition, it would kill. Very small point, but nonetheless, you can see they were absolutely used in prehistory and very, very common throughout the archaeological record in the prehistoric southwestern United States. Now, here are some of the materials that we'll be working with. We have flint, some nice pieces of chert, green obsidian. This, I believe, comes from Mexico. Jet black obsidian, government mountain. Rhyolite, this is local. The locals refer to this as gray obsidian. It comes from Partridge Creek. Uh, this looks like another rhyolite, and then we do have a few pieces of basalt. Very nice, pure materials that will make very sharp points. As far as tools, if I'm staying traditional, I like to use antler. Uh, I have an extreme shortage of antler right now. I need to head back up to Flagstaff and start collecting more elk antler tines. I really like using elk antler. It's longer and I have more leverage and more power to drive a flake away. Uh, moose billets are excellent as well. In our case, we'll be using copper. Um, I have an ishi stick with a copper nail, a leather pad. I have several hand pads has a rubber textured top to them. It really helps out. And then you can see it has a channel to drive the flake away. Several abrasion stones. I have more in the box next to me. And then copper billets. That is my basic toolkit. And now we will start working material. So I'll first work on this flake right here. You can see we have sharp spots around the edges. I just want to abrade that. We have a nice platform right here. You can see that. So that's where I'll strike both of these sides.
Okay, and then we'll abrade the platforms. You can see, once again, we have a platform on this underside. If we strike here, we drive off a flake. And then if we strike on top, on this platform, we drive off a flake underneath it. You can see why you want to wear a mask. You don't want to breathe in this fine dust. It's no good. So I'll take a billet and once again, strike down here. Now I do risk the chance of this breaking on the bottom. You can see we have this large bulb here and then the flake thins out. So we do risk the chance of that breaking, but nonetheless, we should get a nice flake. Right there. That will make a very sharp little bird point. Okay, once again, I'll hit right here and drive off another flake. There we go. Another small bird point. This will definitely make one. We will set that to the side. You can see this material. It does create these step fractures. They kind of drive through and then stop. That's pretty common with this rhyolite. So I flip the stone over and I'll work this other platform that we abraded. Another nice flake. That might be a little bit too thin for what I'm looking for. You can see how thin that drove off here. Well, as I expected, as I continued to remove flakes, the piece broke. I knew that would happen. But nonetheless, I have three flakes that I can use. So it broke three times. This one will make a really nice projectile point. I might even use it for this video demonstration. It'll make a nice small point. This is a really nice flake. It'll make a larger point. You can see the geometry of it. That's a nice piece. This one has a few step fractures. You can see a bit more work will go into this flake, but nonetheless, once again, it will make a large projectile point and a very nice one. So I'm going to work some of these high spots first. You can see this flake is quite thin towards this wider end and then towards the back where it tapers in, it's a little bit thick. I have a platform set up, so I'm just going to remove my initial material right around this thick spot where it tapers in towards the point. It really doesn't take much. And now I can work the other side. So you can see we have some of that bulb removed, but I need to continue to work this piece. You can see it's still very irregular. So I'll start working it from the sides and I'll drive flakes across. more abrasion. And again, I'm just working these flakes across. So I'm removing material from the edge and driving it across the flake. So here you can see there's still irregularity 
it goes down and then this platform swoops up. So I want to straighten this platform by removing flakes on this underside. So where my finger is at, where, where I'm pointing at, is where I'm going to remove these flakes and that will drive this platform down towards the ground and get it more symmetrical. So that's what I'll work on right now. It doesn't take a lot, just small flakes. And you can see that platform has already straightened out just from those few flakes that I removed. But I'll continue on. I'm not pressing in. I'm more raking them off just so I can set up that platform. Okay, so I figured I'd take the time to zoom the camera in and show you what I've done. So you can see I've been removing flakes across and that's apparent by this scar pattern on this flake. I also straightened up this platform. So it's not perfectly straight, but it's good enough to where I can start working this opposite side, which you can see is quite bare. So I took my pressure flaker and I just raked flakes off. I didn't press in, I just simply raked them down. That moves this platform up so it's more symmetrical. Now I can take the pressure flaker and start removing flakes along this tip on this bare side. So I'm going to actually push in and down to get these flakes to travel. This side is looking really good as well. You can see we have a nice straight platform and same thing with this side. It's pretty straight. So I will continue on. Now we will start removing flakes on this opposite side. So here's where I'm at. You can see I remove material on this underside. This biface is starting to thin out. It's looking really good. I also have nice platforms set up on each edge. Nice straight platforms. At this point, I wanna remove mass. It's still a little bit thick on this base end. This is where the point, when complete, will mount into the aero foreshaft. Okay, so I got that base thinned out, so I'm just going to continue removing flakes on this underside to thin it out a little bit more. On this opposite side, I have a bit of a hump to go through. You can see there's a step fracture, so we will try to work that out. Now this rhyolite material, like I said, it's not the best. It's not like obsidian or chert by any means, so the flakes have a hard time traveling, but nonetheless, you can get a fairly thin projectile point like we have here. It's still looking really good. not looking too bad. 
I'm pretty close to finishing it up again. We just shape this out. After we remove the majority of the mass, we're just shaping it and we're driving off smaller flakes. This is nice and thin and it's almost complete. You have to be really careful here not to knock off that tip. Man, that is sharp. Okay, so here's where I'm at with the projectile point. It runs two 0.1 centimeters. To finish this project up, I will add side notches. We'll start that right now. So now it's time to make the notches. I just come in and I chew away at the material on the sides. Now many of the original smaller points in the archaeological record, the notches were not too deep, especially in Sanawa. Sanawa had very shallow notches. The Sanawa culture, that is. I flip it over, just take a few out, and now I'll work on the other side. Here is the projectile point mounted on an arrow shaft. You can see it's very sharp, nice and thin. This will take medium sized game. Hey everyone, so that's gonna wrap up this video on intermediate flint napping, making a smaller projectile point. I do hope you enjoyed it. If so, help us out. Click the notification bell, hit the thumbs up button, and subscribe to the Primitive Lifeways channel on YouTube. Once again, visit our website, primitivelifeways.com. As always, I appreciate every single one of you for your kind contributions and support. We'll see you in the next video where we get into more advanced techniques in flint napping. Take care.